And welcome back to Let's Play Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance on the Game Boy Advance. When we last left off, we had rescued Ethon from the northern part of the sewers. And now we are headed off to the southern part of the city in order to find an access point to the southern part of the sewers. And also, I should go over a few things that I glossed over, and I apologize for that. And one thing that I'd like to talk about is with the skills, you notice all those circles there? Well, that represents how many times you can upgrade that skill by, and the red circles, of course, means how many points you've put into that skill. And also, I do want to mention a few, a couple differences of the from the console version to the Game Boy Advance version, and that is in the Game Boy. One thing that was removed in the Game Boy Advance version is that there is no jumping, and also there was a useful item that got removed, and that was the Recall Potion, which is only available in the console versions. And also, I'd like to read you a couple words of Il about what Ilmatar is about, though I can't really tell you much about what he is like in 3rd edition, but I can tell you what he's like in 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons, because I have... The Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, and if I go to page 30, I can tell you a little bit as to what he's about. Ilmater. Yeah, here we go. And he goes by these few titles. The Crying God, the Rack Broken Lord, or He Who, S he who Endures. Sorry, and here's the first paragraph. Ilmater is the god of suffering, martyrdom, and perseverance, renowned for his compassion and endurance. It is he who offers succor and calming words to those who are in pain, victimized, or in great need. He is the willing sufferer, the one who takes the place of another to heft the other's burden, to take the other's pain. He is the god of the oppressed and the unjustly treated. And his symbol, from what I can tell you from, from the book, is that it is a board with two white hands with the palms facing upward that are bound in what looks like red rope. And there you go. That's a little bit of trivia for you. And right here is the access point to the southern side. And let's bust some fools with our scimitar. Yeah, it is scimitar, but some people do pronounce it as... Oh, dang it. As scimitar. But it's pronounced scimitar. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. And oh, critical hit! Ugh. And oh. Some arrows, nice. And also, I found a... learned a little bit of good news. And it is in regards to the art of Ratchet & Clank. Because on Twitter, Insomniac Games had actually shown that they've gotten the first copy of the book. Which I'm really happy about to see it, because hopefully that'll be a sign that there won't be any more delays. Because that book had been delayed five months from its original date. And its, and its new release date is going to be July 24th on Amazon. And also, while I was attending the live stream of their... Of when Insomniac Games was doing Ratchet & Clank Going Commando, we actually got to get a number as to how many pages are in the book, and it is 248, if I'm remembering right, which is pretty good. And also, yeah, we got a plus one dagger. Not that I'm really going to use it, because it's a dagger. And if anybody who is a fan of the series and really does enjoy collecting items for it, I would highly suggest getting your pre-orders now before it is... before the release date. And, ooh, here we have a serrated scimitar. And what serrated weapons do is that they always deal max damage. Of whatever the weapon is. So yeah, we're always going to essentially probably one-shot all these kobolds. Because yes. Now, for the... Once the book is released on Amazon.com, which is the US price. The price for the US sites, which are Amazon... Yeah, .com, sorry, I'm a little bit flustered. It will be $39.99 US. But for Canada, it is... Fifty-three ninety-nine. So yeah, if you're especially in Canada, I would highly suggest getting your hands, getting a pre-order. And oh, here we got worn padded boots. Ugh, great. Rah! Stupid slimes. Yeah. See, 
We're doing 12 damage each shot. So yeah, we're now guaranteed to kill kobolds. And oh yeah, you may have noticed that there was some pallet swapped kobolds. Yeah, those ones are tougher. Those ones are tougher dudes. So keep that in mind. Nope. What's this? Why it is a rusty hand axe, which is a piece of garbage. Yeah, for when it comes to the art of Ratchet and Clank, I had made my pre-order last October. And oh, what's this? A warden wooden shield. I already got one. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I made my pre-order, and right now, the price that I'm getting it for is, like, really good. It's, like, 60... about 63% from the original price. Because right now, I'm... I'm going to only, like, be paying, like, $19.72 Canadian, which is about... $15.22 American. And that's what it's... That's what the Canadian dollar is sitting at. Or yeah, the Canadian dollar at the time that I'm saying this isn't really doing too hot. Ugh. And there I go talking about economics and all that stuff. That's a first, I guess. And let's see, here we got a rusty battle axe. Piece of garbage. Don't need it! Uh, duh -duh. And here we got an amulet. And, which is kind of crap. And where are you going? Oh, critical hit! Yeah! Ugh, you gotta love it when critical hits happen. And oh, here we got plus two padded gloves. Don't need those because I have the plus four studded leather gloves. Crap, I forgot to... I forgot... Oh, come! Come here! Come here! Get over here! Ugh! If I was a... If I was a tabaxi right now... Oh man, I'd be able to easily outrun these guys. And yeah, essentially tabaxi are cat people. For those who are wondering. Get him! Yeah! And here we got a spiked club, which is, of course, deals max damage for any weapons that are wooden. If it has the spiked... If it has spiked in its name. And... Dead. Dead. I said dead! Let's see, let's grab that. And for killing that kobold, we get a key. And what's in this? Why, we have a wounding longsword. And essentially, a wounding longsword has the potential to poison enemies on a hit. Yeah, it's not exactly really all that great. Especially considering in... D&D 5th edition, poison is one of the worst things that you can use because almost a lot of monsters in the monster manual are either resistant to it or are outright immune. But then again, if especially if you're fighting undead, and that's kind of a given because they don't have any blood. All right, now where's that door? Yeah, I got to find that door that I just passed up cuz right here. <laughs> Kobolds! 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 You all die! Jesus Christ, dude! Are you missing? Like, what? Are you constantly rolling nat ones? Freaking hell! Well, I actually do. I do actually have a story of a one of the most awesome nat ones I've ever rolled. Cause we were. Cause yeah, the last session of D and D that I was playing, we were. Our party was kind of going through this raider camp, and we were essentially trying to investigate it, and thankfully nobody was really paying us too much attention. And one thing that I was doing was I was like trying to take a rough head count as to how many raiders were in the camp, and also trying to find the prisoner. Well, well trying to find a certain prisoner that we were looking for. And when I got up to the prisoner pens, one of the guards kind of sort of took my character over. And for those who don't know, my character is an Azamar sorcerer. Yep. And not just any kind of sorcerer. It's actually a, a special homebrew sorcerer that goes... Oh, dang it. 
That's, yeah, that uses the psychic... Yeah, it's a psychic bloodline or something. Or psychic origin. Yeah, essentially a psionic sorcerer, which is not in the game, actually in the game. Because, like I said, it's homebrew, so it's not there. And here we got more kobolds. Anyways, the guard essentially wanted me to throw rocks at the prisoners with them. And since my character is lawful good... And, oh, here we have a wounding scimitar, which can be awesome. Might, uh, you know what, I might actually just try that out, see if that's any good. And yeah, essentially, since I was really at... Oh, jeez, there you go. Yeah. Ah! Yeah, essentially, I was... My character being lawful good, I just went with the route of purposely fluffing the attack rolls, so... Which I managed to do. And so, thankfully, my... Oh, God, padded armor plus five. Jeez. Yeah, plus five is the maximum in 5e that you can get, or... No, not 5e. In 3.5 in 3rd edition, or 3.0 as it's normally can be called. Yeah, the maximum that you can get for a plus in armor or weapons in a normal game is plus 5. While you can get plus 10 weapons or plus, or plus 10 armor if you're using epic rules. Stay still! You know what? Yeah, and let me tell you, that stuff can be expensive. And here we get another key. Okay, yeah. And then, yeah, then he had me try to throw another rock. And the thing is, I rolled a natural one. And a natural one, by default, is always a miss. Yeah, if if someone... If the DM says that, oh, you throw your weapon, or you... Or you hit someone... Yeah, that's actually a, a house rule, and that's... That's pretty much always been a house... That will always be a house rule. If... Because, yeah, like I said, in the books, a natural 1 on an attack roll is always a miss, while a natural 20 is always a hit. And also, on a natural 20, you also deal double damage. It's a critical hit. Oh, things are slowing down, and I leveled up. How many points do I have? Because I... Ooh, yeah. Let's see, let's go to... Improved critical. Let's spend more points. Yeah, I'm going to get crit more often. Oh, okay, now... Oh, jeez, another poison. Yeah, now... Essentially, when I rolled the nat 1... I essentially... Auto-failed. But the thing is... My character had a negative 1 strength. Or it's negative 1 strength mod. And the thing is, when you're throwing weapons... You always you Pretty much always use your strength. Unless, of course, it's a dart or a dagger in 5th edition. Because, yeah, they can use your dexterity mod and all that. And yeah, I, geez, I'm going off so many tangents here. Stop missing. Anyways, when I rolled the natural... So, with my nat 1, I had a total of 0 on the attack roll. And the DM decided to have it that where my roll was so bad that the rock went bouncing all over the slave... Over, well, the prisoner pen. And here we have a plus 1 more hammer. whoop you do Yeah, Oh, and a plus one keen dagger. Nice. I guess. Yeah, the thing is, my rock went bounce... The rock I threw went bouncing all over the place, and it hit the guy who was... Who essentially was calling me over, and he was like, Cool! Even though the rock hit him in the face. But it, it didn't do any damage. <laughs> oh, jeez, that was honestly quite... That is honestly the most... That is honestly the best type of... Best natural one I've ever gotten. Uh, and, oh, more steam jets, and I think I want to actually go this way. Now, if we get far enough into this place, if I recall, we should see some enemies. Some different enemies. Yep, bugbears. Great. I refuse to kneel! Ah, oh, god dang it. And yeah, there you go. That's the poisoning in action. Not exactly the most... Not the best effect, I'll have to say. And here we got a key. And you know what? Considering I have two points in this... And ooh, here we got a Masterwork Light Mace of Disruption. Now, Masterwork does times two the damage... Or, yeah, 
the weapon does two times the amount of normal damage. And what the disruption ability does is that it can instantly, has the potential to instantly kill undead. And disruption can only be found on blunt weapons. And, ouch. And I am definitely going to want to hold on to that. And here we have a fine club of disruption. Ah, stupid steam jets. Yeah, essentially the game expects you to go that way. Yeah, wait, I think... Oh, crap, am I lost? I'm lost, even though this can be... Even though this place can be easy to get through. Yeah, I think I'm backtracking on myself. Oops. Let's go through sewers, which hopefully don't stink. But then again, it's sewers, that's wishful thinking. And do 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 you can't catch me on the gingerbread man Sorry, I'm just like really investigate gotta be really Ugh frickin' hell I played this not too I played this area a few couple days ago, but jeez Ugh Frickin' hate it how I'm like misremembering stuff. Ow, ow, ow. Steam bath. Nice. And run like a Ninny. Great. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, probably gonna have to go back on myself. Cause we need to look for that guy. Uh, we need to find the wife's husband. We need to find... Yeah. Oh! Here we go. Ah! Get more bugbears. Yeah, if I was using a flaming burst weapon, they'd essentially be set on fire. But I think I think the flaming ability is a little less... Takes a lot more time to actually deal damage over time. And oh god. Yeah, it seems that wounding is... Yeah, you know what? I think I actually may hold on to the... Wounding Scimitar, because this poison ability can actually be rather hel rather helpful in taking down these enemies that take a long time. And yeah, if they're if these guys are low on HP, they'll actually start running away. Hey, over here! Stop it! No! No! You die! Oh, another dude. And here we have worn leather boots, which are honestly quite crap. Because I have... Because don't I have, like, plus... Whoops. Plus boots. And here we have a keen light mace, which is alright, I guess. And... Let's see. Let's go over here and fight that. Fight this guy. Poison! See, look how awesome it is with keen... With critical focus. See, I'm constantly poisoning them as I critically hit, and we receive a key. Yeah, and I think armor, my armor is actually starting to slightly become better. Or slightly getting there. To the point where they actually don't critically hit me, or they don't keep hitting me. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Alright, now let's see. Some more... Some more barrels and things like that. Yeah, I'll have to make sure that I... Probably have to go off screen to see if I missed any bits of loot, but I probably got all the more important pieces of loot. And let's open the door, and uh-oh, someone looks like they're dead. You are too late. They got me. The ones from the guild. They gave me a mission. I was supposed to get big money on this. I was only supposed to bring a stone orb to the Ilmater Cemetery. But when I did, I realized this orb was cursed. All around me, the dead were coming out of the ground. I ran, but when I came back down the sewers... Uh, Karn, the guild's chief, stabbed me in the back. I won't last for long. You must stop this evil thing before it turns Baldur's Gate into a ghost town. One last thing. If you meet my wife, Osala, give her this charm. She gave it to me, and tell her... Ah... Uh, 
tell her she was right. And we received Kyson's lucky charm. No response. It appears to be a corpse. And let's exit. And uh oh. That music can't be good. I I am Fade, a priest of Ilmatar. I was tending the crypts and performing burial rites when I saw that thing. That foul orb! It raises the dead from the graves and plays with them like puppets. I heard it call for them, make them rise from their graves, from their grave, and make them suffer a second death. You must destroy this abomination and wipe the city out of the undead who infest it. I hear them calling to make my life, oh, to take my life, swallow my soul, and make me come back to, s to more suffering. Please, stop them, I beg you. And yep. Baldur's Gate is now overrun by the undead, by skeletons and zombies. Thankfully, we just so happened to get a mace of disruption, and also that hurt. And oh, we got our, another magic ring, a ring of rejuvenation, which of course I shall hang on to for now, but once I get something better, I am going to going to swap it out. And, yep, that skeleton. Okay, now, the thing to note is about this quest is that there is apparently a bug, and I'd like to thank the person that I'm putting in subtitles right here, right now, because, yeah, this bug is kind of game-breaking, as I there's a possibility where I won't be able to progress. So hopefully I do this in the right order, or else I will screw things up. Now, this will erase my save. Yes! Save right now, because I don't want this game to break. Alright. Now let's go talk to her. Oh! But it's the charm... It is the charm that Kaysen, Kaysen was wearing! I knew it! He is dead. Oh my god. I told him not to deal with these people. I am now sure about his fate. My worrying has ended. And I can now go into mourning. Here, take his shield. He won't need it anymore. And thank you for bringing me back his pendant. Now leave me to my grief. Please. And we received the wooden sh a plus three wooden shield. Which I am going to promptly equip right now. Now, we gotta talk to Ethon. Have you heard those sc the screams out there? What was that? It seems to have come from the south part of town. And yeah, now we gotta go ahead and clear out all the undead. And once we do that, we gotta kill the orb. And hello, kill the spiders in my house. Be blessed, brave warrior. Here's to fill your purse and... Oh yeah, some of these quests can be done again. I don't know why. I think there's like some some coding that's screwy. And let's go ahead, sell that, uh, sell that, sell that, sell that, sell that, sell that, sell that. Wounding longsword. Yeah, I'll sell that. Spike club, rusty battle axe. I'll keep that in case I need some damage. Sell that. Oh crap, I sold my shortbow. Great. And let's see. Yeah, sell that. Sell that. Yeah, I got that. I can sell that. Oh yeah, I don't even have any magical padded boots. And sell that. And I want to sell this. And currently, considering I don't have any skills, I can sell that. And let's see. I'm. Let's see. How much. How much. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to be buying this Masterwork Shortbow plus one. It may cost a lot, but trust me, it's going to make this quite a few bits a lot more. a lot less painful. And of course, considering we're going up against Undead, don't use poison on them. It is a rather fruitless endeavor. Well, well, thanks, my friends. With your help, I can now sleep in my house. 
Here, take this for your help. Oh, I forgot this was a quest. You know, once I fell in a manhole, the end of the street, which is... Er... Up there? The west of the marketplace. I was down in the sewers. Er... Believe me or not, but I saw a whole bunch of guys go through a wall down there. And I've never seen them, them come out. There was even a strange creature. Yuck. A gross stuff with eyes and... All... Arr. Arr. You received five gold coins and a hundred experience. Oh boy, something with eyes, eh? Oh joy. All right. Zombie! Die! And, oh, that right there is the Mace of Disruption, the Disruption Ability in Action. Yep, there we go. Ugh. Oh, what the hell? It seems that their attack animation is a little bit screwy. And, yeah, let's go ahead and kill all these undead around the city before I actually go ahead and get to the cem to the cemetery. Stupid skeleton! Drop any loot? Loot? No. No loot. Damn it. Ugh. Any undead over here? Yeah, also this bug, I'm not exactly 100% sure if this bug is a guarantee to happen, but... It's something to be aware of. Doing some sweet damage to these. You know what? I'm just... I'm just gonna be curious. If I land a critical hit and I poison the undead, I am going to be just like absolutely what the hell. Just going... I'll be flabbergasted. No! Yep. No poisoning. That or I probably didn't get the chance. But let's just smash this thing anyways. There's the cemetery we're gonna which we're gonna avoid like the plague for now. So I gotta look everywhere. I gotta make sure that I get all the quests done before. Oh! Zombie! Nope, no disruption there. Yeah, it's not a guarantee thing, and oh, well, there it was. And don't need to... I shouldn't enter any houses. These guys are fast buggers, aren't they? Well, luckily, I can smash them to bits with my freaking mace. Yeah, the thing is in 5e, if you actually hit it a... If this is... It is different in different... Yeah, the thing is, if I was hitting a skeleton in 5th edition with a blunt weapon, I would be dealing double the damage. And that thing right there is the orb. Yeah, you want to be careful about that thing. And yeah, since it's using magic, the shield won't do much damage. Or the shield won't do much wonder with this fight. So we're going to have to fight at it, fight it with ranged attacks. And you know what? Let's see, do I have... Yes, I do! I am going to put a point in Enchant Arrows. Which, yep, plus two additional damage with arrows. And there we go, smash that thing up. And let's pound away at this thing with our bow. Yeah, this takes a while. But, hopefully with this bow, I'll take this thing down. Yeah, this thing is pretty much like a boss. Oh, hey, and I actually got it destroyed in actual record time. Because when I tried doing that without the... I would think I was using just a regular, a regular short bow, and I... Yeah, I did have a point. And yeah, that, that fight just took ages... So, there we go. And, let's see. I think I'll go ahead and sell some of this junk that I found. Let's see. Yeah, that took quite a bit of arrows to get by, but got all of them in the end. 
Yeah, that was definitely... How, let's see how much our damage is with this bow anyways. Before I end it off. 15 to 23. Nice. Well, you know, I think now is a good time as any to end it off here. Because, well, yeah. Going on for 30 minutes. So, I've been the Northern Star Dragon. And have a good one.